Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is expected to be one of the biggest films of 2001. That shouldn't come as much of a surprise, considering the first four books have sold more than 100 million copies. We haven't seen kids be so excited about reading ever. <laughs> Parents and kids who came in loved it right away, and it was a, a favorite of the staff immediately, so we were hand-selling it like crazy. Yeah, I was in the middle of the third one when I started even auditioning, so I was already Harry Potter fanatic. They said, you know, in a survey, two-thirds of the children in this country between, you know, the ages of, like, I think, 8 to 15, know the book, have read the book, have read at least one of the books. You know, that kind of awareness you can't buy. You know, the marketers barely have to do anything. <laughs> you know, they could put up a poster where they wrote in crayon, Harry Potter is coming November whatever, and people would show up. Well, I read the first book seven times, and the second and the third, but I read those two six times, and the fourth book I read twice. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is the fourth installment in the series. It is 700 pages, 37 chapters. But its length hasn't discouraged kids from grabbing the book off the shelves as they arrive. Yes. I never set out to write a book of that length, so it took me by surprise when I saw the final printout. But I, I think when people have read it, they will understand that's how long it needed to be. Well, I think that the true magic of the Harry Potter books has, has been that it has awakened voracious readers in, in a, a wide age range of, of children. Very interesting and it, it's about magic and I like magic. Mr. 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 Oh, Mr. Oh, oh, oh. She's done something that we haven't seen before which is that 10 year old boys, which is an age where you're usually losing boys to television and video games and school sports, she has hooked them. Things defending the stone, aren't there? Spells, enchantments. That's right. Waste of bloody time, if you ask me. Ain't no one gonna get past Fluffy. <laughs> Ain't a soul knows how. Except for me and Dumbledore. Considered the most successful series of children's books ever written, the Potter Collection is currently sold in 200 countries and has been translated into 47 languages. The buzz about Harry Potter really is this combination of a, a kid's movie that adults are totally into. Um, the brilliance of the book seems to be that while parents have been reading these books to their kids, they've actually kind of gotten into the stories themselves. One of the wizard's most rudimentary skills is levitation, or the ability to make objects fly. Wingardium Leviosa. Off you go, then. Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. No, stop, stop, stop. You're going to take someone's eye out. Besides, you're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. You do it then if you're so clever. Go on, go on. Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. What's made the J.K. Rowling books so successful, I think, is that she knows that kids like to be scared a little bit. And, and if things are sort of softened or candy-coated or made to seem like the world is just a safe, happy place, the kids don't buy it. And kids like to be scared. Of Children are passionate about them. We haven't seen anything like it where, where kids are waiting for that next book. And I think that what she's done is she's planted these clues very cleverly early on that, like I said, our, our children are going to pick up on and are waiting to see played off and played out. In my opinion, best day of the week. Why is that, Dudley? Because there's no post on Sundays. Right you are, Harry. No post on Sunday. No, sir. Not one blasted miserable... People ask the question a lot about how accurate is the, is the film in comparison to the books. So much of what's in the book is left up to your imagination. J.K. Rowling doesn't detail so much that there isn't, there isn't some room there, and they have consulted on, with her on everything. So um, if it looks that way, she approved it. Obviously, if you wanted to recreate 
you know, the books faithfully, you're talking about four or five hour epics here. Um, and they're being very careful about what elements they're going to keep and what elements they're going to leave out because the fan, you know, rebellion could just be enormous. <laughs> Coming up next, a rags to riches story. We'll take a look at the woman behind Harry Potter. There was a flood of, um, of, of film offers and uh, television offers and all sorts of adaptations were in the air and I said no to all of them. For more fun facts about Harry Potter, go to www.eonline.com. Hi, welcome back to E's Wild About Harry special. I'm David Adelson at King's Cross Station in London. Now, the Harry Potter phenomenon started in 1990 when a young woman found herself stalled on a train between London and Manchester. She started scribbling notes that would lead to a literary phenomenon that would change her life forever. Yeah. Harry Potter books to end when you're reading them. You just want to keep them. They're so good. I'd say it's a very unique book. The author is really good, and the books just stand out from any other book I've ever read. So who is the mastermind behind Harry Potter? What is it? Some kind of cloak. Well, we'll see them. Put it on. Whoa! My body's gone! I know what that is. That's an invisibility cloak. What was most moving for me was to see certain scenes. J.K. Rowling is uh, uh, quite simply a woman who had a, a great idea. Author Mark Shapiro wrote the unauthorized biography, J.K. Rowling, the wizard behind Harry Potter. The story of J.K. Rowling appealed to me because it was a Cinderella story. Fans know the elusive Harry Potter author as J.K., but friends know her as Joanne Kathleen. This is a woman who four years previous had been a divorced single mother on welfare and through luck, skill, talent and whatever else you want to put into it, uh, she has grown to be one of the uh, most famous wealthy writers in the history of the world. Rowling was an unemployed school teacher with a love of writing. The J.K. Rowling Odyssey is a, is a very interesting series of twists and turns. Uh, while on welfare she determined that she was going to pursue Harry Potter, finish the book. If for no other reason, then she would be able to provide some money for the care of her daughter, and she would have the ego boost of going to a bookstore book and seeing her books on a bookshelf. A former literature and French major with a degree from Exeter College, Rowling always wrote, but mostly short stories, and Harry Potter was the first book she attempted to get published. I think what the Harry Potter books have that a lot of other books do not is the classic mixture of action, adventure, fantasy, and real solid believable characters. The ending is always a surprise and even when you know it's not going to turn out how you think it is, she still surprises you. Rowling surprised herself with the success of the Potter series. In fact, the New York Times placed her as one of the wealthiest women in Great Britain with a reported $22 million plus dollars made from her writing career. And even the Queen took notice. She's become very good friends with the royal family. I mean, she's been, for my research indicates she has been to the castle and has met with Queen Elizabeth at least twice. And uh, they're, they're just fans along with everybody else. So when Rowling was approached to turn her Potter tale into a film, she stunned her fans. In fact, I said no to everyone initially. Probably wouldn't be too strong to say there was a flood of, um, of, of film offers and, and television offers and all sorts of adaptations were in the air, and I said no to all of them. And in fact, initially I said no to Warner Brothers too. And it was about a year after that that um, I said yes to Warner Brothers. Um, I had had many an assurance from Warner Brothers um, that they would do it in a certain way. And what was most important to me was the, the very, the absolute crux of the matter for me was that they did not take my characters and take them off to do something that I didn't want them to do. Life has changed radically for the press shy resident of Edinburgh, Scotland, 
but she continues to be motivated by her audience, mostly children. In her most recent Potter book, The Goblet of Fire, there is a special acknowledgement to one young reader. J.K. Rowling has made a point of never putting a real person's name in any of her books except for one instance in uh, the fourth book. Uh, she received some correspondence from a little girl who was uh, seriously ill and was requesting to talk to her, requesting just sending fan letters. Unfortunately, when the letters came, she was on holiday. By the time she had come back and called the little girl, the little girl had died the day before and uh, she felt so bad about it that she you know th she did something she will never do again she put the little girl's name in one paragraph in the fourth book Rowling has agreed to write seven volumes of Harry Potter the fifth is currently in the works and the first movie in the series is a collaboration between the author and Warner Brothers Rowling received an executive producer credit you are the boy who lived Straight ahead, find out what it took to turn ordinary kids into acting wizards. You there, D5! 